on the cloud. Well, I think we're recording already too. So yeah, we'll give it like two more minutes and then uh, we'll kind of just get started here. I just posted it in the, in the Facebook group as well. Looks like that's good. Okay, cool. Uh, so we got Kurt in the house, we got Price, Adam. Cool, uh, we'll just kick it off. We'll let everybody hop in here. So um, I see that Price already has something to go over. He wants to have us take a look at his offer. Yeah, I can definitely do that. Um, so Kurt has a question. Okay, let's check out the offer and then uh, we can have a look at the question that you have. Let's see, how do I copy, copy link? I already have this thing open. Oh, this is taking me to, oh, straight to the ad. I don't even look at the link actually. Now you can slim your leg easily and look good all summer. 50% off eight years today. And this is a leg slimmer, Lux slimmer, Lux slimmer socks. Like I said that the socks burn fat, let's go. This actually looks really good. This actually looks really good. Um, Price, I don't know if you wanna, actually let me see if, if I can unmute you. See, can you let me know if you can unmute yourself? If not, I can, uh, no. Okay, glad you unmute. Me. Price, what's going on, man? How you doing? Good boss, man, what's up with you? Doing super well, man, super well. Um, I actually think that this is a pretty unique product, man. Um, I think it's definitely unique. I. To kind of give you guys a little bit of background, like personally, both Samir and myself and a couple other people I know have had great results when it comes to products that basically, of course, solve problems, but also like kind of pertain to like insecurities. So like um, the fact that this product promotes like having slimmer legs, I think that that could be uh, something that's huge, especially for the summertime. I actually just got hit with another product that was like, um, that was, uh, it's, these 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 ads are honestly dope but sometimes they go a little bit uh they go wild with it because like they say things like literally burns fat and like do all this like trust me i'm all for it um i've seen like some earlier though i've seen some some gloves some regular gloves that are looked like they're you can you can they can be used for golfing and they were promoting that it like helps with like arthritis and something like that so i'm like they're kind of getting out of pocket there but um um, I think that this is uh, definitely a unique product as far as the offer 50% off. That's, that's typically like, uh, typically initially, like that is kind of like the go-to, like start off with like a discount. And then from there, depending on like how that does, we then get a little bit more uh, creative with our offer, right? Either offering like um, an additional product for free or buy one, get one free or like an ebook, things like that. But um, how's this ad been since you ran it so far? So I've had to restart it a bunch of times, but <clears throat> overall, I think I've gotten about 13 sales from it. Nice. In about a week. So hopefully, you know, once the ad actually optimizes and it's, it pick, starts picking people, it'll pick up a little bit. And then I can... Well, how come you had to restart it? Well, I got done talking to Eric and I was doing things a little bit too fast. I started... Uh, 
going down on the ages and, and messing with the female and male stuff. And he was like, no, just since you're running it, just like run it as if you, it's a cold market, just run it on all female, male, and then also all ages. Mm -hmm. so like, okay. okay. Oh, I see what you mean. So you launched the ad and then after like a day or two, you would go in and change the age group, demographics, things like that. And I didn't realize that once you did that, you restart the Facebook. Yeah, account. yeah, yeah. That's actually completely normal. Like I actually used to do that myself too, like when I didn't know. So that's that's completely normal. Um, yeah, but so far, if it's um, if it's gotten, you launched it this week. You said it was. I think it was like last Saturday or last Friday, something like that. I, I launched it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's already gotten like thirteen sales. It has. Yeah, I mean, uh, I have your have your how high how have your cost per purchase been i know it's a little bit too soon to like really have a look but so far like what what's it been roughly since i restarted it like twice or three or four times and didn't know anything about it uh it's up pretty high it's about 40 50 bucks a piece how much are you selling it for well 15 and then i've got some upsell offers afterwards like uh -huh. for a three pack and then a one that's like really cheap and then uh I also say on the page, can you, is it, is it possible you can look at the page? I put some gifts on there and stuff like that as well. I like did this one up a little bit, but um, it also says on the page, you can get another one for 30% off if you add it to your order. And that, what, where does it say that exactly? I thought it said it at the top. It doesn't say it. Oh, get a second pair, thirty percent off. Yes, yes. Got it. Okay. Now I can't even close this out actually because this is right here. Boom. Okay. Um, no, I mean the 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 product page looks pretty clean. Sometimes, like with some of these things that uh, like the shop that my team have, sometimes I turned them off. I haven't seen that much of a difference, like. Having like this on, for example, or like. Uh, so we can see your page. What are you, what are you talking about? Like some of these. Oh, you can't see my screen. No, no, no. Oh, oh, hold on, then. Let me just. Uh... What about now? Oh yeah, now we can see it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, it looks the the layout looks pretty clean. It's on the shop to my Steam. I haven't seen much of a difference compared to like using like these things, some of the features that they have, and like some of the others. What I would actually try, since you have like a pretty unique product, what we've been having like pretty great results with is like the one product store setup. Like I know you have this store that you have a couple of products. Mm -hmm. I would I would test like using like like a simple theme, like the de like debut theme. That's it's completely free. And literally just creating like a one product store around it where you're just, since this product has already started to, because the, basically your point is like, well, your goal is like, once you find a product that's generating sales, your goal is to see like how you can actually make it profitable. Um, and so like one of the things you can try, like you can still keep this layout. What mm -hmm. you can actually do is if you just go and you hit uh, customize theme, you can go and customize another theme, set it all up, test that. And then depending on how that does, if it does better, obviously run with it. If it doesn't, you can always just like switch back to this theme. Like you don't have to like delete anything or any of that stuff. Like you can literally just switch themes. And so um, since you already have, it's known for sure that when you have like uh, like a specific product, if you switch to like either a niche specific store or a one product store, you can typically get higher conversions. And okay. so uh, I think this product, if it's already been selling for you, I would test like switching over to the one product store setup. What if um, I go with the, the zip up our pages? <clears throat> I've been thinking another, about it. That's another thing I was going to say. You can definitely switch over to, you can definitely, I would do the one product store setup and then, because what you can do is you can still link the Zipify page, Zipify page to your one product store setup. Um, does that make what sense? Have the same URL. See, that's the thing about it. If I change it, then I can't, I have to go back and change the ad again. No, well, you can actually, um, what you can actually do is, 
Uh, if you ch- no, if you change the theme, it's still going to be the same URL. It's still going to be okay. the same URL because it's all under like the product. And in fact, I actually didn't even know this. Um, I did not know this. In fact, you can actually um, you can actually create custom URL paths within Shopify. If you actually go on your online store section and mm-hmm. then you go under like a, um, it's under I think navigation. There's going to be an option that talks about URL redirects, and right mm-hmm. there you can just change wherever you want your uh, your 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 paths to go to your URLs to go to. Does that make sense? Yes. I like I, I, what I would yeah, what I would do is I wouldn't test it with this one since you're currently running it. I would take a different product and and just play around with the URL so you can see like how it works. But it's basically like rather than you having to use like a link shortener, this thing you can just customize your paths. So you can have like shorter URLs within your Shopify store. Oh yeah. I trust me. I didn't even know that until like probably the last couple months, like the fact that you can actually do it within Shopify itself. So, um, yeah, I would, I would have a look at that. Let me see. I can actually switch this back to, uh, to, uh, switch this back to where we were at. Um, let me see if I can actually, uh, are you guys able to see like the, the live Q&A screen? Yes. Okay, cool. Let me see if I can, um, give me one second. Let me just see if I can show you guys something. Uh, give me one second here. <clears throat> What's my damn email for this? Okay, it's not letting me pull it up. Um, okay, that's cool. Let me just get back to the screen. So you say convert it to a worm product store and it might get better conversions. Yeah, so typically what we have found, what the hell is this, sc- this screen at? Um, Typically what we have found is that you can definitely get um, better conversions with like the one product or the niche store setup um, overall. So like either you set up a store that's just like a ra- about those like kinds of products or you switch it over to where the main focus of that store is on that individual product itself. And that should like if you keep... Tr- if you keep track of the conversions, which you can do by looking like at your like analytics, um, you will get, I mean, it's, it's pretty like straightforward. The reason why you get higher conversions is because when people visit your store, they're not looking at other products or literally their main focus is on just that main product. You're right. So, um, yeah, that's what, that's what we have found over and over again. Like for example, like for our micro brands, we focus on having the one product store set up. And when we still set up like, our, our product pages are on Zipify, but like our home pages are all about the one product. And then when you go to like, actually like uh, to the shop button to actually buy, it takes you to the Zipify page. And that's what we set up for the custom landing page. Okay. Does that make sense? Let me know if I, if it doesn't just. Yeah, it, makes, it makes perfect sense. Okay. Um, yeah, man. But if you already have a product that's, that's, um, that's doing this, that it's already brought in those consistent sales. Like that's a pretty good sign. And so, um, yeah, I would, I would test that out to see how that works. Um, I would test that. And then also have you got, have you used, tried using, uh, how has it been going as far as like, have, have people been buying, have bite, have they been biting on that offer that you have as far as like buying, buying one or, or more? With the no, because that's a recent thing. I think since okay. then I've gotten like three sales and it hadn't been like too big since I restarted the Facebook thing. Okay. So hopefully they'll bite on that and the upsell offers that come after the upsell and the downsell afterwards. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Because you can also, uh, are you utilizing one click upsell for upsells by any chance? I am. I am. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I think, I think one, if you let, let the ad optimize for a little bit, you should obviously, you know, that's completely normal. Once you do that, 
Uh, and now as far as let me ask for your ads themselves, are, are you testing different ad variations as well as different audiences? So yes, I'm doing different audiences, but I'm not doing different uh, ad variations. Okay. So yeah, that's one thing that's like um, huge. Like, so the way that Facebook works is like Facebook likes to have options, right? And it likes to have um, different things that it can kind of, it likes to have options so that it can figure out what the best way is to get people to convert and buy. So Basically, when you, if you don't give Facebook enough options, it's not really going to be able to bring you the best kind of results. So typically what we recommend is like minimum three to four ad variations for, per every single individual ad set. So if you're going to go after, let's say like, let's say you go out, like what's one of your targeting options, for example. So there's a compression targeting option. So okay. Like let's say you're going after, yeah, let's say you're going after compression. If you're going to go after compression, you want to have at least three to four different ad variations. Let's say that you want to go after like, I don't know, like, like fat loss or something like that. Right. That's probably too broad. I don't know if I'd go after that, but let's say fat loss, you would want the same three to four variations for fat loss as well. And mm -hmm. for all ad sets, you want to have minimum three to four, because that's what Facebook, Facebook thrives on, on variations. Like that's how, that's how Facebook really works. And so if you only, if you limit yourself to only one ad set, like you, you're not going to be able to really judge the performance on your ads because that's, it's not accurate. Like, Facebook like to really get the best results. It likes variations. And so typically what we do is like we test different headlines, different ad creative. So maybe like um, maybe the, the, a different video, if you have one, or if not uh, an image um, you want to test between uh, images and videos. Um, and then we also test like the copy. So headline, the actual creative and the copy, those are the three that we test with. And so for example, we would make like, you know, maybe two to three different ad copies and then try that and then make a couple more variations with like either another video if you can, or if not an image and try a different ad copy with those images. And then same thing with the headline. Um, and that's typically what we do for like every single, like any, any time that we launch ads, it's always like with minimum three to four variations for every single ad set. There's, that's like a rule of thumb we always go with. Um, because the again, ad, mm -hmm. go ahead. Go ahead. The only thing about that is, is once I do that, won't I have to do more engagement posts? I'm like, how often do you think engagement posts like really work that well? Do you think it works? I think it always depends. Like, um, I think if you, if you have, I think like if you, if you have this product and it's already sold a couple of times, I would mm -hmm. probably run an engagement post just to get that social proof on it. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Like we don't even, we leave the budgets for engagement posts at like five or $10 a day. You know, okay. it's like nothing crazy. I, it works for the fact that it brings, it, it adds more social proof to your ads. So um, I don't think it's like, I don't think like, I don't think you would get no performance if you didn't run it. Mm -hmm. But I think that like now, if you have an, a product that's already generated some sales, it could possibly help if you have a little bit more engagement on it for sure. Um, but he, all you would do though, is you would basically create like, let's say four different ad variations. Right. And then, yeah, you would just, um, you would run those four with like you as engagement post, but that's, that's pretty much it. Like it's not that difficult. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. But you definitely want to give some variation in there though, like for sure. Um, because again, we have found that the, you can get the best results with variations. Like if you limit Facebook, it's, you're not going to be able to really judge it. So, um, that I would also test like images to see how those do. Um, but yeah, man, I, I would implement those and then, you know, kind of see how, how those do for sure. Variation. That's like one of the biggest things Like there's, if there's one thing when it comes to Facebook, it's like giving Facebook variations to kind of, you know, play with because they, what Facebook is going to do is they're going to be like, okay, cool. Let me figure out what ads exactly are going to work for what people. And then once it does, it's going to be able to find you more people that convert for those kind of ads. Right. And they're going to put the right ads in front of the right people. If you try to, it's like trying to uh, typically like one of the things in sales that we do is like we, we focus on like learning how to sell based on like different personality types. Mm -hmm. And so like, if you're only selling towards like one kind of personality type, it's like, you're only going to be able to sell to those that specific audience. If you're not selling to other people, some people like they, they, they respond a lot better to images. Some people respond a lot better to video. And so you want to be able to tailor to both rather than just limit like images, I mean, or videos. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, 
but yeah, man, anything else? No, that's good. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. I would keep, uh, yeah, I would keep it yeah, once you obviously like, you've already kind of gone through like a good hurdle, which is like, or a big hurdle, which is like finding a product that sells consistently. Like you already done that. Now it's just a matter of like, how do you maximize it? And you really increase the profits on that product, you know? Right. Right. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm, we're always down to help Eric. I know can definitely be a big help for sure. Cause, uh, we, those are some of the things that we go over with him. Like when it comes to variations, like when, when it, if, if he showed you inside of like his ad account, like this dude, he takes it to another level. He does like, I, t- sometimes I got to tell him to like not do as much, but he does sometimes does like eight to 10 variations. Um, mm-hmm. but, but that's how you end up figuring out like what ad sets work, which ones don't. But that that's definitely a lot more extreme. Like I would say the bare minimum though, always like minimum three to four, like every single time. Okay. Cool, man. Um, what do we got? What do we got? Um, let me find the chat. It's not there. Where'd this damn chat go? Oops. Trying to bring this damn chat over. Okay, regardless. Okay, so uh, Kurt said he had a question. Kurt, where you're at? Kurt, can you give me a thumbs up so I can see which one is your uh, screen on here? Thumbs up, thumbs up. I don't know which one is yours. Uh, let's see. Kurt, you still here? Oh, wait, hold on. I think I found you. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. Kurt, what's going on, man? How you doing? Oh, I think you unmute. Uh, there we go. There we go. What's going on, man? How you doing? Hey, hey, Juan. How are you doing? I'm doing super well, man. Thanks for asking. Yep. All right. I have a question about your product research process. Sure. sure. Yeah, so... You know, you use Facebook, um, Facebook's powerhouse of data, Facebook search to find or, or to verify products which are currently trending. Yep. We call it products which have a current demand for them, right? Yep. So I'm not sure, but a problem I think I have run into is the fact that maybe Facebook shows certain people different things based on i don't know time location you know different factors such as that so i'm just wondering do you have another you know tool that you use instead of facebook to um like ensure that the ensure that demand is uh, currently there for our product uh you're asking if you're saying because Facebook shows different things to different people, um, is there another tool to use to find products on Facebook? Yeah. I, and I, are you referring to specifically like when you're searching or are you sh- talking about the method where I show you to go on Facebook and become an engaged shopper? I'm talking about search. Yeah. Um, so what have, what have you tried to do so far? Like you went in there and you, what have you tried to search? Yeah, for? yeah. Yeah. So for example, um, for example, you talked about the rose teddy bear, right? So yeah. I went on Facebook and not just the rose, not just the rose teddy bear, but also trying to find products I actually launched an ad last week, but based on the information Facebook is showing me. Um, okay. So I, I launched the ad and it was like about a couple of days, I only got like two ad cards, but when I went on Facebook, um, I'm not really seeing that much, you know, currently trending posts about the product. What, what, was it a product that you researched like on Google Trends as well? And- yes. Google Trends, Google Shopping Insights. You know, how, how, was, on- how were the metrics on Google? They were good. Um, but then you said on Facebook they weren't? Yeah. So the thing is, what I'm thinking, I'm not sure, but... Maybe because of location, like IP address or whatever, it shows maybe, I don't know, North American, something different than, for example, South Americans. 
So for example, when I'm in like a uh, Facebook search, or for example, if you go on Facebook search right now and search for like, I don't know, um, telescopes or, okay, I have one, uh, binoculars, by binoculars. Yep. And I hit the videos. I'm, I mean, outside of high go shop, which we all know with uh, 56,000 views, I'm not seeing anything else like overall. Yeah, so what, 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 I, what I've actually noticed is that Facebook hasn't been, uh, and I can, I can definitely update this. I mean, I'm still testing to see if it's accurate, but Facebook hasn't been showing like ads as much on like when you search for products specifically or offers or uh, like specific keywords. And I think the reason why is because I'm not sure if we kind of went over it last time, but they have uh, this new Facebook ads library. I don't know if you guys saw it. I can actually, um, I can actually pull it up here on my on my screen in case you guys have not seen it. Uh, Facebook ad. If you literally Google Facebook ad library, I'm gonna yeah. show you guys my screen right now. Um, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, okay. Right. You guys can see it. Yes. Okay. Uh, Facebook ad library. You come over here. All the ads now that were being shown on Facebook are they basically made a library and they have all the ads here now. So what I've been doing in what I've actually had a couple of people do is instead of going out and like trying to directly search on Facebook, they've been using like intelligence, for example, finding some stores that are certain that are selling certain products, then going to find the fan pages for those stores and then typing in the fan pages on here. So for example, earlier I, I was searching a couple different um, pages. There was one that I found that was like uh, travel, travel, um, let me see. Give me one second so I can, um, what the hell was it called again? Um, I'm going to find it for you guys. Just one second. I want to, I want to show you guys just like one that I found. They had some pretty badass products too. So basically we're uh, replacing Facebook search with the Facebook ad library in the process. Yeah. Cause like now what you, you like now Facebook changes so that you can't just go on Facebook and go under a fan page and then um, see the info on ads. Yeah. You can't do that anymore. So now right. you basically have to, this is where all the ads are right now. So this is how you um, check if the demand is still current basically. I mean, one of the tools. Well, so that I, I, I got to spend a little bit more time doing it, but because like the one thing about this is that it doesn't take you to like the exact post itself. Like this is how the ads look like, like right here. I actually found this store. They're doing pretty well. They're getting like a lot of traffic. They're getting like roughly, um, let me see. I just had it pulled up. They're getting like roughly, um, uh, like around like 300, 400,000 visitors a month. So okay. these guys are doing pretty well. They're advertising a lot of different products. Some of you guys may have seen this product around. Um, the one thing, yeah, but the one thing is, is that they are not, they also, I wanted to share this with you guys in the group. Like there's also a couple, like these are the gloves that I'm talking about actually that I saw earlier that, that talk about they help with like arthritis or whatever. I'm like, how? But anyway, they have uh, some pretty dope products here though. Like I think that, you know, some of you guys could potentially even use yourselves. Um, yeah. It's so, just kind of funny that they only have 625 likes. Where do you see that? Um, oh, oh. Yeah. well, the thing is, is that like, I, I don't like your likes on your fan page aren't really like that important to be honest. Um, like just having enough for credibility is enough, but like, yeah, I don't think the likes are like that important. I think even if you search up like high go, um, they don't even have, I mean, I, actually, I forgot. Let's see. Let's see what they're, I think actually they got a lot. I'm not going to lie because they like do a lot with like social in general. Their thing is like, uh, I mean, yeah, they have like 135K, but I, I've seen some, I've seen some that doesn't have, uh, that they're doing big numbers and they don't have as much, but, um, yeah, this is how I would research the ads moving forward. The only thing is that again, I don't, I don't think it ever takes you to the actual post itself. I don't think you can actually see that. Right. So we don't know the, um, for example, we don't know when they would have started, you don't, you don't know what they have started, but they, they, these are only on when ads are definitely running. Like if they're not running, okay, ads, okay. no. So you, you at least know that you don't know the exact engagement. I would have to probably go and like check to see like, um, to see if you can find like this exact ad on Facebook. Like 
magic massager gun. We could probably check like magic massager gun. I'll actually look at the video. Actually, the post is right here. Yeah, so I guess you can still do that. All right, hold on. Let me check. Yeah. It looks like it was actually launched very recently. Very recently. Yeah, it looks like it's a new ad, actually. Ah, oh, beautiful. Yeah, I see that on, on my search as well. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that's what you can do. I guess they are still working, like, just like how I did in the video. Um, but sometimes it's like you got to, you have to spend a little bit more time finding the, you know, like the different ads you're looking for. True. I mean, I was, I was doing the product research, but I, um, I forgot about the drop shipping, drop shipping center in AliExpress. And yeah. then when I, when I checked the product, basically it was, um, selling zero products and I'm like, yo, this, I'm basically wasting money. Yeah. Yeah. I have to be so careful. Yeah, sometimes you just want to make sure you take your time. Um, you want to take your time to do, you know, the research just because it can, like, again, like obviously finding a good product can be all the, make all the difference from like, you know, getting results and actually not. So true. That's one thing, yeah. All right. And just a second question, a follow up. Yeah. Um, you're saying to price that we, uh, there should be a uh, minimum three to four ad variations per ad set. Yep, that's so, a rule of thumb for everyone, everyone on the call. Um, that's the typical rule. You always wanna have variations, variations within like, again, your, um, and then, and there's a video inside of the EA20 talking about the breakdown of like the most important things to test or to have in your ads, like the ad creative, the headline, and the copy. Um, right. But yeah, go ahead. Uh, so just to clarify, so in each ad set, you're going to have, for example, a different angle, a different offer, um, product reviews or whatever. But when you head to the other ad set, do you use those same four ad variations? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. You're not making three to four variations for every single ad set. You're just making three to four and then using the same three to four for all. Ah, the okay. Yeah, because Facebook likes to figure out what ads work the best for specific audiences, right? And the way that it does that is by putting different kinds of ads in front of the same people to see which one they respond to better. And so um, that's typically what you want to do is like spend a good amount of time setting up these variations. We actually have a, we have a sheet that we use personally that basically like we, you know, the first thing we do is like we focus on coming up with different headlines, then different body copy and then different images. And then yeah, I use it. So I'm going to, I'll have Samir actually, once he's back, like just edit the sheet so that it's a lot easier for you guys to use. And, um, you know, you guys can have it as a reference, but we do use that whenever we're launching new products because, um, again, like that's the best way to accurately measure the results. Because the thing is, is that I don't know if a lot of you guys know, but Facebook, I think in September, they're going to be switching to a hundred percent CBO. So campaign budget optimization. And so, um, the reason why you want to have variations is because, Facebook is only going to be allocating the spend on the ads that are performing the best. And so it's going to basically take those variations and see which one gets better performance and then maximize your spend on those. But obviously if you have no variations, it's just going to spend all your money on the ads that you have. And so you're not going to be able to really find, figure out, you know, how different ads respond to how different people, and different audiences respond to different ads. True. Yep. What else? that's it that's it awesome man well i appreciate you hopping on man it's always a pleasure yo and i mean i just have to say that in the ea 2.0 video when you said that we should probably go over the product research like six to i, th I think you said six to seven times or something it's not it's it's no joke um yo we really have to we really have to be well versed in what we're doing or else you're gonna waste money man yeah. I mean, again, like I was actually talking to, um, one of our inner circle clients earlier and, um, you know, he was letting me know, like he he's taking a route where he's going like straight into a micro brand. So like for him, he has to make sure he definitely does like real in-depth research because he's going to be investing into like inventory up front. And so you can only imagine like if you don't do enough research 
and you end up investing into like a lot of inventory, like that can definitely be a costly mistake. Um, but honestly, like it's at first it does, it will be time consuming and like it, it, it'll, it'll take you a little bit to learn it. But the best part is, is like, once you have it down, you know, like you can easily like, for example, like us, like we train one of our staff members to know how to do product research. And now we have someone that does it for us every single day, you know, like, and that's all they help us with. So, uh, initially you want to learn how to do it yourself so you can actually train the right people. But after you have it down, it's going to be very beneficial because then it gets a lot easier as time goes on. Because like, for example, for me, like if I even go on my Facebook timeline right now, I was actually on it before I even like, uh, hop on the chat and like set up the call. And dude, I had so many ads show up on my timeline. There's actually, um, I don't know how come for any new people, like the turbo ad finder has been working, but it still works for me. Uh, I guess if you, if you have it, if you had it before, like a change, you get to keep it. But even regardless, even if without that, when I go on Facebook, even if I don't use it, I still get a ton of ads that show up. And so it gets easier. Yeah, like yeah. the more research you do, the easier it gets, because then you can just I, I realistically, like once it gets to the point you visit a good amount of pages, it, it'll be, the, it'll, it, it's a lot easier. And it's a lot more enjoyable doing product research when you can just go on Facebook or Instagram and like just have ads shown to you. And then you can reverse, reverse, um, uh, reverse engineer those products to see if their products worth testing or not. Very true. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, trust me. I, I know, I know how that goes. I I've been through it. I've been through it. Definitely. Cool, man. Uh, let's see what we got. I think I have to switch screens. Okay. We got, uh, okay. So that was Kurt. Mike said he has a question. So we'll do Mike and then we'll go to uh, Jose. Um, also just a quick announcement while I have you guys on here. Um, we've been, I've been spending, uh, I think I announced on the lot on the last live call, um, how we, we have like accountability advisors and also coaches we work with here on the staff. And, um, we are going to have, um, Mike is someone that has already gone through the EA 2.0, um, passions to profits accelerator and our inner circle as well. So he's pretty much gone through like all of our training programs. And we also work with him a lot more closely now with like helping him with his micro brand. Um, he's actually here on this live call. He has a question. So I'm going to, I'm going to obviously, uh, answer his question here in a second, but moving forward, what we're actually going to do is we're going to start having, um, live calls a lot more frequently with you guys. So we're still, um, I think we pretty much have the schedule na nailed down, but we're going to, we're going to do is we're actually going to up the live call schedule to, um, you know, we're thinking like two or three a week rather than just one, two or three a week. And we figured that may help you guys, you know, get a lot more questions answered a lot more frequently and really push things forward when it comes to, you know, your e-commerce business. So, um, we'll be testing that out, um, this upcoming week. Uh, we'll test it out again, having multiple live calls, seeing how those do. Um, and hopefully obviously like it helps, like our goal is we're just testing these things out to see like how we can obviously help all of you guys like really push everything forward. And we know like these, for example, like when I'm able to look at your offers, look at your ads or look at your store, like I know that this definitely helps. And so we obviously couldn't do it. Um, you know, we're limited to how many people's stores or ads or offers we can look at all in one call. So we figured at least if we have more calls, we can obviously help, um, between me, Samir, um, we're going to have Mike and also Eric who, um, are, again, are guys that we closely work with, not just like guys that are just getting started in e-commerce. Like these guys are actively in the trenches with us and, uh, helping us with, with other projects. And so, um, yeah, I'm pretty excited to have, you know, to have me rolling this out to you guys, because this is something that's fairly new. We've never really, uh, spent time, like, uh, really training other individuals and working with people a lot more closely. Uh, just because it, it, you know, it does take a decent amount of time, obviously from our end, but uh, it's been enjoyable doing with both of them because obviously they have like their own micro brands and it's obviously uh, a good time seeing them like launch it and implement all that we have to, you know, show them. So that's something that we're going to be rolling out. Just wanted to give you guys a quick update. Um, but Mike, what's going on, man? How you doing? What's going on, Juan? How you been? Doing super well, man. Super well. It's good. It's good. Um, so the question I had Juan was, uh, so I'm running a uh, Facebook ads with the, the micro brand mm -hmm. and so far my campaign is not really profitable, but mm -hmm. I'm getting purchases at least, uh, two, two every single day. 
at least but my campaign isn't uh, prof profitable. So I was wondering, do you think I should turn off that campaign, start a new one and base it like with all the data I collected from the original one? Yeah, so that, that, that's a great question. Um, typically what we do is, is like, I would say initially like right out of the gate with our initial micro brand, like, I would say it, it was somewhat not, it, it was, it was definitely profitable, but we also spent a good amount of time, like setting everything up and like really optimizing pages and ads and all that stuff. Um, so far though, have you had enough data to like start? You, you have, like you've already started using lookalike audiences and all that, right? Yeah. Lookalikes for video views and view content. What so about far, how many purchases have you had? 24. Okay, cool. Um, okay. probably gonna need a couple more to make it look like off of that. Yeah. We can probably make some like add to carts maybe. Add um, to carts, I got 88. Okay. Yeah. So you can probably make one off of that. Yeah. And um, initiate checkouts. I have about 70, somewhere around there. I have a lot of initiate checkouts, a lot. Yeah. So what I would say is that typically one of the, like when you have an unprofitable campaign, um, typically what you want to go ahead and do is have a look at, is first off, narrow down and look through and uh, find the most profitable ad sets, the most pro and the most profitable ads, right. With the, like, like the variations and all that. Um, then once you have those, I, I mean, you can, I would say, yeah, you'd probably want to set up a, a brand new campaign with like just the most profitable ad sets and the most profitable ads, like just with those. Um, because then you can actually track it. If you don't, if you don't basically like, um, if, and what I mean by like uh, most profitable ad sets, I mean like breaking it down and even looking like, like the most profitable demographic, the most profitable gender, like super specific on like the most prof, like you want to, you want to, you want to basically like before you switch it off or maybe like turn it off, have a look at all the data and then build a new campaign based on what converted the best. So again, what audiences converted the best, what age group converted the best, what demographic converted the best, um, then when it comes to the ads themselves, which ads with what copy or creative converted the best, um, you know, what ads with the best headlines, like that you want to take the best performing ad sets and ads. And then, yeah, I would launch a new campaign with just those that, yeah. uh, that have already performed pretty well. So you can let those run. And then, you know, I would also like implement and maybe like launch some, test out some, you know, new audiences and some, and some new ad angles and variations. Um, Got it. That's right. the, yeah, that's typically what we would do. Yeah. That's it. Because I know I was looking through actually some of our campaigns today and it looks like we have done that. Like we've turned some off, we've turned some off. Um, and for example, like one of the ones that we did is like initially we were running out when we first launched, we weren't using Zipify pages. So what we did is we took the same data, took the most profitable ad sets and ads and, you know, demographics, all that, turned that campaign off, made a new campaign, pointed it towards the Zipify page only, and then ran all the ads towards that. And so, yeah, we've done that before. I think you, you know, I think that'll definitely um, help as well. Once you basically narrow down like all those things. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Also mm -hmm. another question. Mm -hmm. So I had a really good ad set that was really performing really good. Mm -hmm. So in like, Three days, I had four purchases, and the ro ROAS was like at four, yeah. which is pretty good. Yeah. And I duplicated that ad set three times. But the thing is, it was it was so weird. Um, when I used CBO, Facebook was spending more money on other ad sets than the ad was, sets that was profitable. Yeah, I don't, and I, 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 I think I do think that. I would hands down Samir is definitely a lot more knowledgeable than me in this space. Okay. But um, I don't think that the duplicating ad sets works as effective in CBO simply because of the fact that Facebook is always, it's not going to basically like when you duplicate ad sets, the purpose is so that those same winning ad sets, you can basically spend more money on three, on, you know, on three duplicates of it or two duplicates. But when you do CBO, like Facebook is only going to spend money on the ad sets that are performing. So I don't think that that works with CBO personally. Um, I'd probably, I'll spend more time like learning about, so obviously I have better answers for you guys, but um, 
I don't think that it will. First off, um, again, like in September, everything is going to be CBO based on Facebook. So I don't know if the, the duplicating ad sets necessarily uh, is going to be like one of the ways to kind of scale as of then. Um, yeah, because I, I realized I tried to do, I tried to do the same thing and I didn't see a difference when I duplicated the ad sets either. So uh, I'm with you on that one. I'm not sure if that's if that's going to be still like the go to. Um, I would probably, yeah, I mean, it, it is a little bit tricky with CBO, but typically, I mean, how's CBO been working for you so far? For me, it's been, it's been looking better because yeah, I do get less, like when I run ad sets, when I used to run on um, ad set budget, it would just send me a bunch of p people to my website who won't buy, but CBO I think is way better because it sends like, the people who are most likely to buy. Yeah. Like they're sending like people who, you no, know, I think one day my conversion rate was like at 9%. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. So they're sending like better quality traffic to the store. With yeah. CBO. Which makes sense. Cause again, like the way that Facebook works and the reason why variation works is because there might be some days where like, and it's crazy, but like some days, people might just be in a different mood and they might just react to videos better. So what Facebook basically does, like they say, Hey, okay, I put this video in front of this person and they reacted well. Well now for the rest of the day, I'm going to keep trying to push these videos on people and see how that works. And if it doesn't, it'll just switch back to image, but it's dope because it actually does that. Um, yeah. Like Facebook, yeah. Facebook is, is really good. That's how that, that's how they're doing that. But um, yeah, I, I would try that, man. I would, uh, cause I know you've been running that campaign for a little bit. I would try, yeah, I'd probably like pause it for now. And then like tomorrow, for example, if you have time already, just um, like, again, go through, narrow down very specifics within all the ads and all the ads, relaunch with those. And then, um, you know, test out different audiences, different ads. That's probably what I would do. All right. I will do that. That's cool. True. And I've been talking to Eric too. He's really, he's really been helping out with that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause he, yeah, cause we spent we spent a lot of time teaching Eric a lot about Facebook, like, like a lot of time with Eric teaching him like a lot of ins and outs. So he can definitely be like um, a helping hand when it comes to Facebook. Cause even up to date, like we're 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 still kind of going back and forth. Cause like with some of his um, some of his ads, it, it was kind of the same where we had to test all these different variations and split it up between CBO and like regular ad sets. So we've done a lot of testing. He's got to see it, so he can definitely be. Uh, a huge help with those. All right, then that's all the questions I had. Cool, man. I appreciate you hopping on as always. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Um, what do we got? I got to keep switching my screen. Okay, we have a uh, Jose. Jose, can you give me a uh, just a thumbs up so I can see where your screen is at, and then I can unmute you. Just a quick thumbs up. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Jose, what's going on, man? How you doing? I can't hear you for some reason. Can't hear you. Now we can kind of hear you, I think. Um, How about that? Is that better? I'm trying to get you more burnt. What's going on, man? Jose, what's going on, man? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Cool. Can you hear me? I can hear you, man. Yeah. You said, what advice can you tell us for dealing with suppliers when getting samples for your micro brand? That's a great question. So, um, yeah, I would say I was actually just having a conversation with one of my suppliers. Actually, that's why I was kind of responding on my phone because it's like this is when they're up, obviously, um, at nighttime. Um, the best advice I would say it's like when it comes to suppliers overall, the biggest the biggest thing is like um, the biggest thing when it comes to suppliers is basically having yourself uh, having yourself um, or portraying yourself as. Uh, as like a big company, not coming off as like you're someone that's brand new, just getting started. And the reason why that is, is because once when you do that, 
they basically like they take advantage. They like give you the highest prices. They give you like non really negotiable terms, and it sucks. What you want to focus is you, the biggest adv- advice I'd have is like to shift the the focus and the perception on as rather than you reaching out to them as somebody that's brand new in e-commerce and it's like selling things online, reach out to them in a way where like you're trying to qualify them to see if they're actually even qualified uh, to work with you. So what we do, for example, is like we say we reach out and the first thing we say is like, hey, you know, we run multiple e-commerce brands in the e-commerce business and we're looking to get a better supplier for this specific product. Uh, and we're looking, to, we're looking to inquire about samples. Um, you know, what do you guys charge for a branded sample with custom logo packaging and, and, and product itself? And they respond, cool. Um, that's how we basically reach out to them initially, um, regardless if we have a brand up or not. You know, like I, I've been... I've been using this method since I, you know, since we were drop shipping, we were just getting started in e-commerce. So that's the biggest piece of advice because once you do that, then they basically, they treat you a lot differently. Like you'll notice they, they won't try to, you know, like when they see it, they're working with like a professional and someone like a bigger company or corporation, or at least they think they are, they, um, they just treat you different. They give you better pricing. They're much more negotiable and they're just much more flexible. So that's what I would personally um, recommend as far as like reaching out to, uh, different suppliers for your micro brand. That's one of the biggest things. Um, I would say you also want to like typically have options. Like I have at least two minimum that you get like samples from. So you can see like who has better quality. Typically we do like two to three, but I would say two minimum. Um, but I would say that's one of the biggest thing because you want to frame who you are right from the get go. Right. Because you want to let them know like upfront, like, Hey, this is, I run, such and such companies or such and such businesses. And uh, even if you don't, even if you're just getting started, you still tell them you're running a huge operation because in reality you're in the works of running that huge operation. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's what I would recommend um, right off the gate. Like just always reaching out and I guarantee you, like you'll get a lot more, a lot better, uh, a lot more success with these suppliers. Does that make sense, Jose? Oh, I think I actually got to un. Actually, I think I got to unmute you. Um, I just did something. Hold on, bear with me. I just did something. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I just. Uh, hmm, I don't even. Oh, take off hold. Boom and unmute unmute oh it's not letting me unmute oh unmute you for some reason jose oh there you go can you hear me yeah i can hear you cool man um did that answer your question by the way right so it's kind of like a a two-part question so i think just what you said you want to have a variety of different suppliers yeah so i contacted about 10 suppliers and i'm gonna get labeled samples out of my product from each one but I was wondering, so as far as price goes, what, am, what should I expect from them? And also, should I go with AliExpress, Alibaba, or should I have both? In the well, well, if you're going to get your own branded products, you can only do it on Alibaba. You, um, AliExpress does not do like branded products. So um, you would basically, unless you were going to drop ship them, like you would, you would automatically count uh, AliExpress out because they don't do branded products. Um, so that's that. Two, I would say as far as like pricing goes, I typically, I'll like, I'll look at the price, but I won't, I personally don't try to negotiate too much like on the samples or like the price of the samples or like on the, on the final hard cost. I like to like, typically the rule when it comes to sales is like, you always want to give and then take, right? So what I like to do is like, I'll approach them. I'll, I'll let them say, okay, like what's the cost for such and such quantity? I'll ask them and then I won't try to negotiate. What I'll do is I'll then go and order a sample. So I'm going to give, right. I'm paying for a sample. I'm giving value to them. And then once I get the sample back, as long as it's good quality, I'll then respond and like then start to negotiate after I've already given to them and I've already purchased from them. Because the thing is, is that these suppliers, they get a lot of people that reach out to them all the time. And so like they typically don't really pay attention unless like you, you show somewhat like serious interest. And typically like if you at least, order a sample like you're already a lot more of a quality person and someone that doesn't buy a sample 
So that's typically what I do as far as like um, for pricing. Like that's typically what I've noticed that kind of works best. When I try to negotiate right off the top, like right away, I haven't been able to get as good pricing compared to like when I at least get a sample first and then negotiate um, for like the final like per unit price. Another thing when it comes to negotiating, what you want to do is just for you guys all know, like when it comes to even Alibaba, even though you get, you get the products from Alibaba for like less than half of what you get them on AliExpress, these suppliers are still marking up these products six to seven times the actual cost. So there is always wriggle room all the time. You just have to know how to wiggle your way in. So, um, uh, there's a couple different ways you can do it. One of the main ways I'd like to wiggle, like, uh, negotiate is like, I like to basically like, once I negotiate verbally, like ask them, okay, can you guys do this price? Okay, cool. I like to get like a, an actual copy of like an invoice that has those prices because typically when you have an invoice, like it's like when you have an invoice, it's like you, you're, you're like almost finalized with choosing that supplier. Right. So what I like to do is get a finalized invoice with one price. Um, and the reason why I like to do that is because when you tell a supplier like, Oh, I have somebody else that's doing like $2 less. It's not as powerful as when you show them an invoice from someone that's giving them, giving you a cheaper price. So what I do is I'll, I'll negotiate with them like verbally, like saying, Hey, I have somebody that's doing this price. Can you do it? If they say, yeah, cool. I'll get, I'll get them to make me an invoice. I'll then take that invoice and bring it to another supplier and negotiate with them. And then I'll do that with another supplier and with them. And then I'll basically renegotiate showing like hard copies of the, of these invoices. And the reason why is because these suppliers, they know what you're serious once you actually have the final invoice, because that's typically when it's finalized. So um, when it comes to negotiating, that's typically what I do and what I found to kind of work best. Um, and you can typically get better prices than if you just try to negotiate saying like, Oh, people, like I'm getting this price from this person, right? Because that could be a lot. I typically do, I do a mixture of like showing screenshots that I'm getting these prices from other suppliers. And then I do the invoices a hundred percent. And that typically helps with like getting better prices. That makes sense? That makes perfect sense. Nice. Man. That's exciting, man. Huh? Are you pumped to be able to, you know, start getting samples and start you know, getting things lined up for these products or what? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm just like, uh, I'm on the edge of my seat because we've been working on it, you know, and uh, I went to your, went to the workshop in San Diego, you know, and I saw where everyone was at, you know, and I've been listening a lot about uh, Mike and, you know, the stance score and how he's killing it. So yeah, we're really excited to, you know, also set the bar high up there. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah, man. And, and again, like that, like, we, we know it's not easy. It's definitely a journey to, you know, take this approach, like, cause it's not, the approach that everybody else takes, right? Obviously it takes a little bit more work. It takes more time, but at the end of the day, like I guarantee you guys, like it, it ends up being worth it because this, like if you, once you guys get this process down, you can literally duplicate it across different products, different brands. And it's like, you know, like it becomes like a, a full operating machine that you're able to consistently build with these same skill sets. So um, we're, we're here to support you any way we can, man. Uh, always feel free to reach out if there's ever anything you need assistance with, anything you don't know about. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we'd be more than glad to help any way we can. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem, man. I appreciate you also uh, hopping on the live call. Um, let's see what we got. What do we got? Okay. So we cover, we got Jose, we got Jonathan. I have a question. I'm struggling with figuring out what type of offer to run on the Zipify one click upsell app. Once you have your products, uh, loaded. Okay. Jonathan. Now, which one is, uh, can you give me a thumbs up or just raise your hand Jonathan, so I can see which one your screen is. Uh, Jonathan, Jonathan. Jonathan, we still you still here with us, man? Maybe not. Jonathan, yeah, Jonathan Chisholm. Did we lose you? I think we lost one. We lost one. We lost a soldier. Oh, that's you. The hat. Oh, let's go. Okay. Jonathan, what's going on, man? Hey man, nothing much. What's going on, man? How's your day coming along so far? 
man. It's all right, man. I'm tired, man, working. I feel you, man. Same here, man. Same here. I've been up since like like roughly 6 a.m. and still still at it now. So no biggie, no biggie. Uh, Right, right. You wanted to know about what kind of offers are on Zipify, one click upsell once you have your products loaded. Yeah. So typically, what, um, upselling is honestly like one of the things I want to say, I know I, we don't have a module on like setting up upsells. Um, we actually have to add that in. And so I'll work. I'm going to make that a, I'm going to, I'm going to make a note of that. So we actually can add that in. Uh, okay. Me personally, if I don't write things down, like I will forget. So I'm just going to do it right now in front of you guys to hold myself accountable. So if I, if we don't get it made, you guys can let me know. Um, yeah, I got my notepad right here, man. A little yellow notepad. Dude, I have, I have a, an actual notebook and I have a, a notepad in my I keep right here with me. So I'm with you on that. Okay. Um, but let me just write that in real fast. So material I'm adding in um, a module on one OCU. So yeah, when it comes to one-click upsells, um, there's a couple of different things we test. We don't test too much with like different, um, like different offers on the upsells. What we test is more like different, like percentages of like discounts on offers. So typically there's basically two things first. Like the, one of the things that we test is like, depending on the product, if it's a product that people could use more than one of, then we'll, the first thing that we do is we test offering like another one of the same product just had a discount. Right. And that's the first thing we test, but we also split test. We, we basically always, if you get the, it's a little bit more expensive, but if you get the, I think you guys should try it out. If you already have one click upsell, I would try out the, the, the upgraded version because it allows you to run split test. And so what you can basically do is we have found that we get the best conversions when we upsell another of the same product that people came to get. Right. But okay. there's sometimes where um, we're able to get people to buy another, a, a cross sell product just as much, but on overall lifetime for us, we've gotten more conversions from getting people to buy one more of what they've already came in for. And so uh, with the upsell, with the, with the, with the one click upsell and the split test features, the best board of what we typically do is we'll immediately split test like right away upselling uh, another one of the same product versus um, a different product. And typically what we do is um, we, we split test like offering like typically for discounts, odd numbers work the best. So we'll do like one time offer of like 21% off right now. If you guys, if they, if they buy, and then if that, and then if that doesn't work, then we'll have a down sell. The down sell is typically for like 15% off. Um, and then we test the same thing. We test down selling, uh, on, uh, just like, um, typically for the down sales, no, typically for the down sales, we'll do like a different product, like an inexpensive product, but we'll always do it the 15%. We never really test like, uh, any like other specific offers besides like different kinds of discount incentives. And simply because that's what we have found to work the best. Like we've gotten really good results with upselling people, uh, with a 21% discount and then down selling with like a 15% discount. And so that's what we typically like split test. Okay. Mm-hmm. What have you been, um, like, what have you, have you set any upsells up just yet? Oh, I have one upsell. Um, but yeah, I was struggling with the, um, I went through the inimitable offers. I was yeah. struggling with, I know you said go, through the um, offer section to find out what type of offers. To, yeah, so um, have. The, the, the for the offers, I would mainly those are going to be mainly like for uh, like that to actually get people to purchase, right? Like so, typically, like on your on your on your sales page or on your landing page, you'll basically either have an offer. Typically, like we'll do this. Like we'll typically start off right with like trying to get people to buy, just like offering like fifty percent off or something like that, right? Then if that doesn't convert as well, then we'll try to do something like uh, buy one, get this product free. And typically that product is like a complimentary product that goes hand in hand with that product. And then if that doesn't work, then we'll try like an ebook, like get this buy one, get this ebook for free. Um, But all those offers, we only split test to get people to actually buy on the front end. 
Like that's, that's when we typically get, uh, try those offers for upselling. Like really we haven't, we've tried like offers, but we've gotten the best conversions by literally just like upselling other products all the time with like not really offers apart from just like the discount. And the reason why it works so well is because you're going to be offering that discount. And the way that we position it is like that discount is never available anywhere else on the store. It's only available that one time as that one time offer. And there's no way to get back to that page. And in reality, there is no way for them to get that offer again, unless they purchase because they're not going to be able to get that discount on the, on the website or on your, on your social media pages or anywhere else. So that's why that, um, that upsell of like 21% or 15% works so well. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to make a module going over like, uh, just showing like one of the examples of like one of the pages that we would set up and how we would do it. And then literally you guys are going to be able to just literally like use the same page and just change out the, the copy, the text and the images and use it for yourselves. So I'll, I'll make that. Um, I'll probably, you could probably even whip that up for you guys, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow or Saturday. I can make that for you guys. Cause that's super simple. I'm just going to show you guys the exact example one that we like the template that we use. And all you got to do is switch it all, swap it with your products and, um, your products and your, and your advertising, your color schemes, things like that. Okay. Okay. I appreciate it. Of course, man. Um, anything else I can help you with right now? Yeah, I had another question. I know you can waste a bunch of time, you know, uploading a bunch of different products in the description. So what I want to know is what's the general number of products that you start with and, you know, how many categories and how many of those are filler products for a general store? Oh, you're, so you're not, you're, I thought you said like uh, how many products you upsell. You're saying like how many products you have on your store when you initially get started? Yeah, that was, that was my first question, the upsell. This is um, another one. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I would say, honestly, man, like you don't really need that many products in your store to get started. Like, um, like literally you can just start off your store with one product. Like you don't, you know, cause you can have the earlier we spoke about how you can have the one product set up. You can try that. Or if you want to test a couple different products at the same time, then you can add in like whatever products you research in your store, but you can literally like launch a product with like a one product store setup. And, um, yeah, like even having that one product would be fine, you know? Okay. Um, now if you want to obviously test different products at the same time, then you can have like, you know, three to four or like four to six, something like that. I typically like to do like even numbers so that like on the home, on like the website, it's not like uneven and it doesn't look, it looks like all kind of congruent and like well put together on the site. Um, but there's honestly like no, there's no exact amount of products that you need it's more of like, you know, which products are you going to initially focus on? Honestly, that's really what it comes down to. Overall, though, I'll say this, that we we're getting the best conversions from like, you know, like typically what we'll do is if we have a couple of products we want to test at once, we'll, we'll set them all up on the store on like a different theme. We'll start running ads to them, seeing like which ones start doing what, but then we'll focus on like whatever products doing the best. We'll switch transition onto like the one product store setup and we're getting the highest conversions on that, on doing that method. Uh, okay. But, um, yeah, I, I would say minimum, like you don't, there's not really a minimum, like you can literally do like one product store setups and, um, you know, you can literally start so, with one product if you wanted to. So should you have a great description for all of those, um, products on the store? That, that's another thing. Like it, it can take you a lot of time to set up all the proper descriptions and all that. I would only have the descriptions and like the landing pages, um, like all set up and organized for the products that you're actually going to advertise. Okay. Yeah. You don't have to do like your product descriptions and all that for all your products. Okay. Oh, one last question. Do you, are you guys having any um, workshops in Atlanta? That's where I am right now. Um, dude, that's a great question. We've, we've started to get a lot more interest with our workshops, like in places like Atlanta and also like Canada. So we're going to be, once Samir gets back, we're thinking about like setting up a, we're going to set up like a calendar and like plan out our schedules. Um, sometimes with traveling, it can get a little bit tricky, but we're planning on like doing like minimum one workshop a month um, or like every other month minimum. 
And so we'll always announce it though, like way in advance. So I, we have gotten a lot of interest in like Adva- Atlanta and like also like Houston. So um, yeah, we'll definitely, once we have the dates and locations, we'll definitely like post them in the group and I'm also post them like um, on social and send out emails in regards to those dates. But yeah, I definitely want to pass by Atlanta. I heard, I've heard nothing but great things myself of the, of Atlanta overall. So I definitely want to visit. Okay. Man, I, I appreciate the help, man. Of course, man. Of course. Um, always feel free to reach out, man. If there's ever anything that we can, you know, help with, we also have the accountability advisors that, you know, you're able to schedule a call with in case you do have any other questions. Um, and yeah, man, I mean, again, we're here to guide all of you guys throughout this entire journey. So, yes, okay. sir. I appreciate it, man. Of course. Um, cool. I think uh, actually Mike said he got another tomorrow is Friday. Oh, Kurt caught that error that I made saying tomorrow is Friday. Yeah, yeah it's either tomorrow. I'll get that video for you guys either tomorrow or uh, this weekend for sure. And then I know that I'm also going to add in the uh, the one-click upsell example so you guys can learn how to set up those pages as well. Um, Mike said he has another question. So I'll answer Mike's, and then uh, we'll wrap it up here. Uh, Mike, where are you at? Where are you at? Okay. Mike, what's going on, man? Hey, man. Uh, so another question. So I had um, – so I tried to – so when I was testing the product, that I was doing with the general store. Yeah. I still have the emails from those customers. How many, I purchases, those? How many purchases you got? That was 79 purchases from that one. Oh yeah. I would definitely try to make, you typically yeah. want like at least a hundred, but I would see if you can make a look like audience from that list. Yeah, But if I add the purchases I have now, I just checked it's 28, not 24, 28 purchases. That I got. You're saying if you combine them. Yeah. Combine those. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. You can definitely I, do that. And also like, I think like, um, when you try to create a lookalike audience, sometimes it's telling me audience too small, even if I have, you know, um, a hundred. Cause I, cause I, I think I try to do add to cards and it says audience too small. But that, was that initially like, sometimes it says that, but if you give it like a couple hours, it'll actually populate an audience. Oh, um, okay. I haven't given it time yet. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I would have a look. Like sometimes it says that initially, but um, and then later on it'll re-update. But sometimes like Facebook is always changing things around, so maybe like you need a little bit more. But typically, we've been able to make look-alike audiences off of like definitely like if you have an email list of like a hundred people, uh, or if you have like a hundred purchases, we've been able to make uh, look-alikes off that. So I would just revisit it and like give it some time to load because sometimes it doesn't populate right away. So you have to like let it populate, then go back and try it again. Okay. Also, you think I you think it's worth including the initiated checkouts, like abandoned checkouts, uh, people, or just the purchases? I would focus on like the be- the highest quality audiences are probably going to be the lookalikes from purchases and like abandoned cards. So, um, so we typically focus on making lookalikes like from we test all of them like viewed content all that, but um, the best kind of like look like audiences you're going to be able to get is from purchases for sure. And then like your, your abandoned cards. I don't know if initiate, we've tried testing initiate checkouts, but it doesn't compare compared to like your abandoned cards or purchases. Got it. All right. Then I'll test that audience out. And you want to test, you know, all the 1%, 2%, 3, 4, 5%. Not, not you definitely want to. Yeah. I would test those different variations, like those percentages for both the purchases and the add to cards. Like I would, I would focus on testing, with the, those two audiences compared to like testing the different percentages with like viewed content or anything like that. All right. Got it. All right. And that's my question. Thanks. Cool. 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 We got anything else? Um, that looks like pretty much it. Um, cool guys. Well, I appreciate all you guys for hopping on. Um, this will be recorded and we'll include this inside of the EA 2 So you guys will have access to, it if you want to rewatch it, um, I know we got to cover some pretty solid things today. So I appreciate all you guys hopping on. I uh, hope you guys keep hustling. Again, if any questions you guys have uh, in between these live calls, you can always feel free to reach out, drop questions in the chat, in the Telegram group, wherever. Uh, we'll do our best to get back to you guys. Um, besides that, I hope you guys all have a great rest of your night. 
And I'm going to, I'll see you guys next week. Peace. Um,